morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, bro? How you doing, bro? Cool, man. So what's your name? Uh, my name is John. John, can you speak up for me, John? Yes, sir. I'm just nervous. Like, oh, man. <laughs> Welcome to All Time it. Media. You're speaking with ATM Fox. John, it's nice to meet you again. But you know. How old are you? I'm 26 years old. 26, okay. Gages is cool, man. Thank you. Pulled them out of nowhere on me. Yeah. So what brings you out here to Camden, New Jersey, John, and where are you from? Uh, I'm born and raised in Camden. Okay. I'm from East Camden. Um, East. Shout out East Camden. Shout out East, you know what I mean? All my friends, me and mother, we already know who they are. Everybody doing good, you know. Uh, right. So, what brings me out here is, yeah. first off, I just was in a uh, program, a halfway house in Patterson, New Jersey, and uh, sadly, I had messed up. I relapsed after, uh, this is the longest clean time I've had, it was exactly 18 months, 3 weeks, and uh, I was so proud of myself. Right. Like, like so proud I'm, i was making money saving it sent my family money like just riding good riding solo okay. paying my own bills for the first like it was great it was great but it just it ended it really did um i hit a wall i started smoking again um crack i just literally got in camden maybe uh not even 20 minutes ago i just oh my god um i was in patterson i've been up for two days straight just smoking crack and uh spending all my money saving i spent about 950 dollars in a day and a half you was in patterson running you said i was in patterson running just like less than an hour ago running oh, man. you know running around patterson um but uh what brought me to my relapse a friend of mine in the halfway house uh I was I relapsed in the halfway house. Nobody knew, oh. you know, and uh, it was eating at me every day. And uh, one day, my buddy, I'm not gonna say his name on camera, but right, uh, right. he uh, he begged me to smoke with him. I don't want to do that, you know. I don't want to like anybody's recovery. Can I curse? Is that okay? All you right, can I'll curse. Try not you to. curse, man. This is this is big for you, man. I mean, I'll try not to, but uh, if I move around, it's just like. Uh, so anyway, my buddy Greg, he came to my room. Long story short, he, we were smoking crack together. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, I did something I would never ever do. What Give uh, fentanyl to another person ah. for one reason that, uh, and I'll explain why. For one reason, I don't want to be responsible for that death, and especially a friend of mine. And it's just, you know, right. sadly, we were doing it for about three days. Sweat. You see that tattoo behind your neck, bro? That's tough. Uh, it's a broken heart because I believe love is pain. Right. Love is pain. So, uh, back when I was saying, I did a, a, a thing that I really never wanted to do. And uh, it's like a big moral. It's, it's more than a moral. It's everything. Speak up for me. Um, I broke my one true thing I would never do. And that is provide fed no high with fentanyl with uh, somebody who's in recovery for the simple fact a uh, little piece of grain of salt you'll OD on you know, right I've OD about nine times mm. and uh, <sighs> it's nothing to be proud of uh, so yeah my buddy I probably said his name on camera shout out Greg wherever you are right now uh, Greg is in Patterson right now. His phone is dead. He has no money. And I feel really even more worse because I got in an argument with him before I left. I basically walked off on him. And that, like, hurts me. He's like my right-hand man. And I was just getting mad at the fact that he was calling me out my bullshit. And I didn't want to hear it. Because, you know, John knows what's best for me. Yeah. So, anyway... Um, Monday night, me and me and Greg, normal shit. I just got off of work and uh, go to my room. Mind you, we're in a halfway house, right? And uh, we're smoking crack, you know, not even just blowing it, fucking it right in the room in the halfway house. Like, 
I'll throw some mm. comedy in here, just mm -hmm. release some of the tension, like smoking the crack, and then just be like, yo, you hear that, bro? You hear that? Ain't, ain't nobody's the wind blowing, bro. But anyway, uh, Monday night, about four o'clock, we got IOP. We got to go to IOP for right. the, like four to seven, whatever. So uh, I give him fat on for the first time. Right. And uh, for perspective, um, I'll just literally show you how much this is even better right here if I can feel it up. Oh man, I can't. For perspective on what he did about the tip of that green, how much he did. And uh, he didn't overdose. Uh. But he was to the point where he didn't know his name. He couldn't stand up. He was rolling. You know, just. Uh, and I'm just, I, I got so upset. It just snapped in my head, like, what are you doing? Mm. What are you doing? You carried, him out, you carried him out your room? Yeah, I picked him up physically. He's about 200 pounds, you know what I mean? Right. Picked him up physically, got him out of my room, put him in his bed. I go to IOP, I come back, he's fine. Um, he was talking <laughs> to another friend of ours, uh, explaining the situation. And uh, so we're done IOP, whatever, you know. So it's about 9.30, you know. You know, he come back in my room, we're blowing it down, smoking. Right. And uh, here come more of the feds. We're smoking crack, and then uh, I'm about ready to blow running on crack, so it's time to come down and take a sniff some dope. So, uh, again, what I showed earlier about how much, yeah. I did a little bit more I gave to him. And I kept stressing to him, don't do it in little pieces. But don't do it at all. But this is how sick our minds were in, in the addiction. Right. So he did it. I did it. He is so whacked out of his mind. Just picture that by like maybe five, whatever. Again, proceeded to carry him to his room. It's about 10 o'clock. So, oh uh, man. So I go in my room. I just sit and think. I call my, my grandmother. I love you, Mimi. Shout out, Mimi. Um, Mimi's my grandma. I got a tatted right here. Uh, she's my ride or die. The family needs everything to me. But back on what happened, so I call her, I get off the phone. I go check on him. Um, he's, he's like, he's breathing, you know. Uh, so, and I go back in my room, call my dad, talk to my baby sister, whatever. And mind you, I'm high as hell. I don't know how. They used to catch me just by the sound of my voice on the phone. They knew I was high, but they did. They did. They just didn't want to say it. So I, I go out one final time to use the bathroom, brush my teeth, go to sleep, get ready for work the next morning. So it's about 10:32 approximately. I'll never forget it. It's, it's going to be there forever. So it's 10:32. Uh, I hear a bang on the floor. I, I, I it's coming from uh, his door, Greg's door, and uh, I just barge in there. Okay. He's in there on the floor, blue. Blue. Oh Done. God. Stiff as a board. I instantly, I have Narcan in my room just for, you know, we weren't supposed to be doing it all, uh, but we were working smart. We kept Narcan in our room. We have to, because, like, he's lightweight, but he didn't know I was getting high. He just knew I was getting high for another two, three days. I've been getting high for a week. I relapsed on the Saturday evening. And, uh, no, probably the week before that, but he's in there. I run to get my Narcan, uh, I give him CPR. Mind you, I know what to do when somebody's going through this. Um, somebody had died in my arms, my other best friend, when I was 21 years old. And uh, I'll va I vowed to myself, like, if it gets to that point and I find somebody, I'm going to help them. And uh, I just learned knowledge over the years. So I applied my knowledge, everything I knew, for uh, saving my best friend, man. And uh, it just... I give him a shot in Narcan. I'm giving him mouth to mouth. I'm blowing air down his lungs. I'm listening to him. Give him sternal rubs. Nothing. Get another shot. He's getting more blue and blue, and the breathing is starting to stop. He's like six minutes. He would have been dead. I ran downstairs. I'm just wearing my boxers and my slides, yo. Run downstairs, mind you. In the halfway house, I run down there. Staff sees me. They're like, "What are you doing?" I just wanted to try to grab the Narcan without them knowing but of course not i'm fucking in swearing boxers yo so i tell him i said greg overdosed just give me the narcan you you got the staff are fat and lazy you ain't getting up them steps like me 
I ran so quick in the third shot in our game. On top of that, I'm on the phone with 911, like, please, I'm in the halfway house, my best friend's OD, and they give me three shots in the and I hung up. They already knew. This is how bad it is, like, the, the addiction with this halfway house. I don't want to put their name out there, but it's not the one everybody thinks it is in Patterson. I'm just going to say that. But they already knew the address. That's how many overdoses goes in here. Mm. And mind you, I stayed clean through all them, but yeah, you know, this, I don't know who, but- You gave him the third shot? You gave him the third shot, I'm CPR, CPR, CPR. He, I see the, you know, his hands, they start turning more red. You know, he's breathing, I'm just, you know, I'm saying, Greg, 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 please, please, don't, please, please. And at this point, mind you, I, I broke my own, and- You broke what? I broke my, what I would never do, give mm. somebody fentanyl. You can pay me a million dollars, mm. cash money, mm. just mm -hmm. to go buy a bag of fentanyl for you. I will not do it. That's killing everybody. Everybody. So, he's coming back. About three minutes later, the cops are coming in. Blah, blah, blah. And he survives. He survived. He survives. That's good. He made it. Thank God. If I didn't walk out the room at that time, he would have been gone. Because of the way they do room checks there after 9 o'clock, nobody coming upstairs to check rooms till 1230. He mm. would have been dead. And that's my boy. Mind you, I gave that shit to him. Mm -hmm. and then I would have to live with that, man. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.